And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards that time for none by the receiver. On first down, he's going to float this one deep right side. And this is caught at the 20. And all the way in early lead. Good pass, clean catch, and a house call there on the fly route. And not that much room to operate. So that tells you about his acceleration. We always talk about being able to go from 0 to 60 real fast. It took him less time than that to get the top speed and complete that play. Travis Coons now to add the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So here come the Patriots now to take over on offense. They're led out by a man who started more Super Bowls than anyone in NFL history, the great Tom Brady. I can't help but admire the career Tom Brady has had. The numbers are off the charts. The Super Bowl championships and rings, we know that they are incredible. But how about the durability? Had one season that he missed, most of that season because of a knee injury. The rest of the time, he answers the bell and wills his team to victory more times than not. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop, up a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Brady to throw on second down. And he'll find his favorite receiver. That's Edelman. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert him to be a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, oh boy, it's been good. And a double coverage and it's intercepted. Picked off here by the former first rounder, Justin Gilbert. And they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. And they told us repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings, we need some plays from our defense here on the road early. They got one. And don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense that the other defense is rated higher than them. You going to let that happen, guys? Is that how we're going to play? And they responded to the challenge. And let's shift now to talking about the Patriots' defense. And it's the first quarter, but they gave up the score last time. How important is it here not to fall two scores behind? Extremely important because not only are you try to avoid being in a big deficit to start this game off, you also want to get into a pattern where that offense has the advantage. You've got to find a way to turn things around the game. That signifies they want to run the football. Yeah, occasionally they'll play action and throw it, but most of the time, those guys on the field means strength, power, run the ball behind them. And now what a lot of teams are doing is they're taking an extra offensive tackle and putting him in a tight end number to give them even more blocking power. And we just saw it on that play. It's a gain of 24 that time. And the Browns are going to have a first and goal. Now that was a big run. It takes them all the way down to the one-yard line, and that'll shake the confidence of any defense. So when they're looking for a little bit of support now, looking at their defensive coordinator, if I'm him, I dial up some pressure. I just go after him because otherwise you're still to play it back on your heels, and that's not going to help your defense at all. Time running out here on the play clock. They'll try and punch it in with Crowell. And he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. I 
Isaiah Crowell, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Browns add on to their lead. And he was excellent on that drive. He deserved to be the one to get across the chart. Oh, I agree with you totally. A workhorse on the drive. And how about that last decisive run to punch it in? Now Coons on to add the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense right. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Blunt, the lone running back. And they'll get it up the middle. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two, now third down. But when it comes to the running game, the New England Patriots, they're one of the few teams in the NFL that I don't think care much about balancing things out. <laughs> Last year, to your point, fifth in passing yardage, number 30 in the run game. What they want to do each and every week is make a game plan based on their opponent not so much their own personnel, and they try to attack that way. Ah, yes, Brady to Gronk. You think these two are in sync? <laughs> Without a doubt, and look, they both understand what they can do for each other. Gronk knows if he gets open, the ball's going to be there. And Tom Brady knows what a great security blanket Gronk is. When all else fails, you find big 87. His throw incomplete. The wideout Chris Hogan, the intended receiver. And it's second down. it off to Blunt. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And the offense lining up first and 10. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. They run again with Blunt. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. So he loses through alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gaughton. It's the Patriots in possession to begin quarter number two. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. So now on fourth down, on comes Steven Goskowski to try and get the pass three. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this goal. Around. We got three, we got three, fellas, we got three. 
They come out with one back and three tight ends. On the run, it's Crowell. And a cutback left and a crease here. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. They give him a gain of 38. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, where they call play side. But how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that left tackle. If you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage. You've got a chance to rumble. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Oh, and a delay of game there. They could not get the playoff in time. Frustrating for the head coach. Frustrating for the offense. Sometimes you have to get the play call in a little bit quicker. Still second down. And a long way to go for the offense here on second down. After the penalty, it's Crowell. And some room to maneuver. <laughs> he got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. So it'll be first down here after the run. They'll try to sneak with Griffin. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Well, I think the effort was there, but sometimes the defense is just a little bit better. No gain on the quarterback sneak. No place to go. Keeps it. Call it a gain of two as they're knocking on the door now. Third and goal. Hey, give them credit. That's a good solid gain there on the sneak because it all comes together. Enough space. Get forward. Gain yardage. Well done. They come out here in the eye. They'll try to run it in. Johnson. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. Okay, Brandon, work with me here. Let's analyze this situation. A touchdown here, that could be the knockout blow in the second quarter. But if they go for it and don't get it, that could bring life to the other sideline. They'll run for it with Crowell. They stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Two minutes to go here in the first half. More from Cleveland after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Caught left side, Bennett. And they'll get him down up past the 15. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Have we yet met a receiver that wasn't excited about getting a chance to play with Tom Brady? Absolutely not. And Martellus Bennett bringing his considerable skills to New England now. Going to hook up with Mr. Brady for another completion here. And 90 catches a couple years ago in Chicago, 53 last year for Bennett. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude. But I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Brady going to throw. Quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. Evades the tackler, and now some space. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. 
Brady now on first down. Trying to hit the tight end Bennett, but it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him to have two picks in this frame. Almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want to call it, and move on. He hasn't been able to do so here in the second. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups, and they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. To throw is RG3. Flushed out right. He can run for it, and he will. Now we're going to get a timeout here called by the Patriots. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. They'll pass up a field goal attempt. It would have been a 45-yarder. Now they'll go for it on fourth. They come out with one back and three tight ends. He's going to take a shot for the... And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Josh Gordon, touchdown number 15 of the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. And it is now 21 go. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And the Patriots gearing up to go now. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Shotgun now for Brady. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski, complete. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Throwing on first down is Brady. Got a man complete. It's Chris Hogan. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. And now they call on Steven Goskowski, his career-long 57 yards set just a year ago. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. So that would have been something from that distance, but to no event. They don't even want to let their guys get a drink of water. All right, third quarter. Let's get to it. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Browns defense getting ready. They look good in the first half. They'll be looking to carry that momentum over into half number two. Finish a game the way you started it. That's typically the message at halftime when things are going well. You've done everything you're expected to do. How about a little bit more of that in the second half? But be aware, they may throw something different at you to begin things. Yeah, 50% of the equation still left to go. On first and 10, here's Brady. Finding time. 
And Brady going to be intercepted a third time. A great read, and it's picked off. I tell you, Brandon, it seems like this guy's been all over the field so far. That's his second interception of the game. And so much of playing defense in the NFL, especially when it comes to defending the pass, is all about positioning and technique. And this is fantastic work on both fronts there. And making their way back out there now, the Patriots defense. And with this deficit, let's be honest, it's time for them to get a stop. And partners, you understand very well from our time together and visiting with coaches, defensive coordinators tend to be a little more emotional, a little more high strung than others. <laughs> I have a feeling that that speech came out about taking a stand and bowing up in this possession. Yeah, that's where the, this word pride comes out, right? In a big way. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. They'll come out in the pistol. A fake to Crowell. Now it's Griffin. He's going to let it go again. This is caught inside the 15. And all the way in. Touchdown. Josh Gordon, his second TD of the game and 16th on the season. And the forced turnover on defense leads to six points. In order to lead in the game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28-0 now. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here at half two. Trying to get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot of the time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Caught left side, Benner. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A big play there for the Patriots. 34 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that will drive a team towards a victory. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. get to the quarterback that quickly a lot of times it's called a jailbreak it wasn't quite that fast but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball and as he tried to do that he was hit and it forced an incompletion 10 yards still left on second down they slot Gronkowski out right Brady again here on second and 10 and seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Throwing is Brady on third down. And he will find his man. That's Hogan complete. And he's brought down after a good game. That one goes for 24 yards. 
partner they weren't quite in the red zone but things are starting to get condensed on the field throwing the corner route there really nice play because it gives them a little bit of room to complete it now Brady again has a man and it's Edelman for the Patriot touchdown Julian Edelman, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Patriots make some inroads here on that deficit. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Now Steven Goskowski on for the extra point. He's got it to bring it back to 28-7 now. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. He juked him. 
And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Here's a give to Crowell. Big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. On second down, here's Crowell. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. And the confidence from last week carrying over to this week. Two weeks in a row, and I have to admit, last week, I thought they were going to really struggle running the football. I thought that they had a real challenge on their hands, and they more than met it and created big-time openings. They just absolutely hurtled through them, and they figured, why not? Let's carry it forward this week. Again, the same thing. All the blocking schemes are there. I think they've really done a great job. That B gap between the guard and the tackle has been there all game for them, and they continue to explore it. He's just going downhill. Not only downhill, but with incredible, incredible force. And the tackle's made there by one of the secondary members. And I can guarantee you, having played that spot in the huddle right now or on the field, they're urging for a little bit more support from the guys up front. I actually remember one game where I hopped over a defensive lineman to make a tackle downfield and realized he was 10 yards downfield. That's not good. That's being driven off the line of scrimmage, and you can't have that if you're going to win a game on defense. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have. And we're back now here in Cleveland. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. And some options here for the offense on second and two. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. On first and ten, it's Griffin. His pass caught with the four. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Taylor Gabriel, his second touchdown on the season. And the Browns add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? This fielded at the two. He'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. We get a glance at the Browns' defense as they file into position. See if they can regroup a little bit. They gave up the touchdown last drive. And you know from our meetings with coaches all across the league, one of their pet peeves, when teams get down, a lot of these guys now, they, they want to treat it like it's a video game or something. Hit reset. Let's start over, coach. Now the first two series, they don't even matter now. Let's, let's play again. That's not how it works. You're down. You gave up a touchdown. You can't do it again. You have to dig in, grit it out, and fight it out. Reset buttons. That is driving everybody crazy. There are no reset buttons when you're playing in this game. Preach, Chucky. Preach. We got three, fellas. We got three. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. Brady to throw on second down. Over the middle, Julian Edelman, it's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. And this will be incomplete. Offense. 
So oftentimes you see defensive holding. Here it's offensive holding for the flag. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. My 20, my 20, my 20. Shotgun now for Brady. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Looking for his all-pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski, and that'll bring up second down. Again, it's Brady. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. He was looking for Julian Edelman that time. And that'll make it third down. So here's third and 20 with a long yardage. Defense going with a nickel look. Brady to throw again. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. After that incompletion, almost get the sense that he's going to look up at the booth and, and kind of look at us and say, hey, you guys got any suggestions? It's been that kind of game, hasn't it? They've had him on the run throughout. Yeah, and I get that you're trying to make a play here losing fourth quarter, but to throw when you're not set with pressure coming could have been an interception. Very much so, and it's been that kind of game for him. They've had him on the run, had him off balance. He's got to find a way to make some big-time throws down the stretch. Oh, look at the juke. A great return there. Bobbin and weaving his way for 31 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior. Big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. Again, it's Crowell. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Another good run there, and now we're seeing an offense that's opposed its will on a lot of defense. When we talk about that all the time, what does it really mean? It means that the guys on the offensive line, they feel like they can do whatever they want. They're now they're saying, run it again. Give us another chance to smack someone and create some space. On the defensive side of the ball, not only have they opposed their will against you, you're almost powerless to figure out what you're doing there, but you got to keep your spirit up at the same time, and they're taking that too. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Play clock winding down. A fake to Crowell. Now it's Griffin. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first. But at least it's fourth down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. The Browns will go. It's Griffin. He's going to try and go deep again. It's caught inside the 25. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. Wow, talk about a big fourth down conversion for the score defensively. How do you let that happen? I think you start with the offense and you give them credit for going for it, having that type of... Well, let's face it, audacity. But defensively, I think you're right on target, partner. There's no way something like that's supposed to happen in that situation. He will send this one away. 
This fielded at the two. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Patriots offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Gronkowski, slot left. Brady now on first down. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski, complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. They get 25 yards out of that one. And it gives the Pats a first down. Pulling on first down is Brady. Caught left side, Bennett. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 14 there. And it'll be first down, New England. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Into the red zone, it's Brady. Can't find anyone open. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Brady. He finds the tight end harbor complete. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. up the late touchdown here but still down big and a great example there just getting it took them an extra look but they found out it is a touchdown indeed the official says this one counts Goskowski now after the touchdown he'll send this one away that'll be taken in the end zone Shed's a second man. He's building up some momentum, isn't he? And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. The that's caught inside the 20, and he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listen in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Now, this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. 
Big mistake here by the kicker, kicking it out of bounds. The one that drives coaches crazy. Keep it in the field of play and let your guys cover. They go play action here on first down. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. The former Bill, Chris Hogan, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. Now Brady. And over the middle to the tight end, Bennett. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Last week, as you get a look at some of the numbers, he just wasn't in the mix, almost like he was out of the game plan. We couldn't figure out why, but here, he's fully in the game plan. I like what you just brought up because when we asked the coaches about that, it was a little sheepish in there, wasn't it? There, there was a, there, there, that's when they admitted, yeah, we kind of neglected him last week. We've got to find ways to get him the football scheme to get him open because they know he's a big-time weapon, so they're going to have people out there to cover him. But sometimes you just have to do some things, show some different formations, get him isolated where he can be one-on-one. -on -one. And in this game, they're getting that done. Brandon, you identified early that this game looked like it was going to be lopsided in favor of the winning team. And then late in this one, you and I, we, we were digging at stuff, weren't we, to talk about, partner? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I think we brought up statistics from somewhere around circa 1927-28, hoping we could keep people going in this one. Uh, deep in the annals for this blowout win. So for the Browns, they improved to 5-0 now on the young season. And they will hit the road next week to take back home next week as they're set to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. So that'll do it for us. For my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew, I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound.